So let's just imagine for a moment that your soul has been transported into the Elder Scrolls universe. You are a soul destined to be fitted into a mortal body. But which mortal body do you pick? Which of the mortal races would you deem ideal for the life that you would want to live in Tamriel? Welcome ladies and gentlemen back to Fudge Muppet. My name is Scott and today we have the third video in this series. Back in the day we've made videos discussing whether or not being a vampire or a werewolf is worth it so we decided to expand this discussion to the races of the Elder Scrolls. If I could be a soul transported to the Elder Scrolls world and born as one of the major 10 playable races of Tamriel, which race would I want to be? Now of course this is a loaded question with many variables, many potential outcomes and also various preferences. So let's begin discussing the benefits and detriments to living a life as a certain race in the Elder Scrolls. Whether it be Argonian, Dark Elf, High Elf or Nord, stay tuned to this series because we are going to discuss each and every one of the races in a dedicated video. And for today's topic, is being a Breton worth it? So, before we dive into the topic itself, let's get all the rules and conditions straight. So, after a long, long time of Skyrim, which races are best and least beneficial in terms of gameplay, statistics and such is all very common knowledge. But these videos are going to be discussing whether or not being a certain race is worth it within a law context. What challenges does this race face? What benefits? What is their upbringing like? So in addition to make this easier, we are going to first make some assumptions, one of which is considering that each of the races discussed will be assumed to have grown up in their homeland, which basically means if they are a Dunma from Morrowind, Bosma from Valenwood, High Elf from Somerset Isles, and so on. And the second assumption we are making is that we are going to be talking in a contemporary context, meaning we are talking about the most recent Elder Scrolls dates in the timeline, which means the 201st year of the Fourth Era, which is in fact the time when the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is set. But yes, that's all we need to know, time to get down to the good stuff, so for this video, if we we were a soul in the Elder Scrolls universe that could choose to be any of the playable races, would being a Breton be worth it? Let's begin. The Bretons of High Rock may look like a rather generic race of humans when compared to the likes of Argonians or Orcs or Khajiit, but in actuality they are a very unique race, not falling into any of the man, mer or beast racial categories. The Bretons are a hybrid. They are known to many as the man, mer, half man, half elf. If we trace the Bretons back to their roots, you'll find the Nidic human settlers of the Iliac Bay region and the migrating Dereni elves. If the question had been, is being a need worth it? Well, that question would be simple to answer. Probably not. The needs of Volonfell, modern day Hammerfell, were constantly being invaded by foreign powers, including but not limited to the Aelids and the Dwemer. Eventually they were driven to extinction in the province by the Yakudans. As for the needs sharing the lands with migrating Oldmer, most were enslaved or slaughtered. The Aelids constantly raided and controlled Nedic territory, enslaving all who survived. Little is known of the needs in Skyrim and Morrowind, but we do know that they warred with the Kaima. So being a need was certainly not a peaceful existence. The Needs serve as the ancestor race for the Bretons, just like the Imperials. In High Rock, the Needic population fared better than their kin in other provinces. Yes, they lived at the bottom of a strict feudal hierarchy with the Elven nobles positioned at the top, but there was one aspect of Dereni culture that prevented them from being completely wiped out. The Dereni enjoyed a custom called the Perquisite of Coitus, which was the right for elves to engage in recreational intercourse with any need of their choice. Of course, the subordinate needs had little to say in the matter, but I think it is fair to say that most needs would find this circumstance preferable to death or enslavement, as the needs suffered in many other territories of Tamriel. In an indirect way though, the perquisite of Coitus was a death sentence for the Needs, as they were gradually bred from existence. Many Dereni took advantage of the custom and took on Nedic concubines, which often resulted in the birth of mixed race offspring, whom they referred to as Manmer, or as they are known today as Bretons. So over time, the Needs of High Rock faced their slow death by Snoo Snoo and the Bretons were born of the incessant interbreeding. With the birth of this new hybrid race, we can return Turn to the question, is being a Breton worth it? Well, during these early years of the first era, being a Breton was nowhere near as good as being an elf, but 
it was an awful lot better than being a human. Bretons born under Dureni rule were not considered legitimate members of the noble houses they descended from, but they occupied social positions of far greater privilege than the Nedic peasantry. The Bretons became the middle class in High Rock. They were eventually forbidden from marrying elves as the Dureni soon began to fear the longevity of their race. After all, the creation of the Bretons could easily lead to the genetic assimilation of the elves, not just the Needs. So from there, the Bretons proceeded to breed out the remaining humans, and Bretons naturally became a feudal society, with a hierarchy based around who had the highest concentration of elven blood. Eventually, after attacks from the needs of the Elysian Order and the Nords of Skyrim, the Dureni were weakened and retreated to the remote Isle of Balfiera in an attempt to preserve their lineage. From then, High Rock was left under Breton control and the man were no longer answered to the pure-blooded elven superiors. The elves were gone, as were the needs, leaving the Bretons to govern their own kingdoms. Initially, High Rock existed as numerous fiefdoms and city-states, warring with themselves as well with foreign forces. There were so many independent kingdoms that the phrase, find a new hill, become a king, became a provincial proverb. But since the miracle of peace occurred, the many kingdoms of High Rock were mostly unified, leaving only a handful of powerful kingdoms, such as Daggerfall and Wayrest. That has remained largely unchanged to the present day, and High Rock's political landscape is one of kings in capitals and vassal lords holding dominion over smaller cities and settlements. To be born in High Rock means to be born into feudal society. So what if you were born as a Breton in modern day High Rock? Well, due to their feudal society, the biggest variable is your economic and social standing. Breton culture revolves around power and influence. If you were born into a monarchy, you're almost certainly going to have a great life. You'll be raised in court, surrounded by lords and ladies, feasts and wine are abundant at every meal, and most people will suck up to you just to have a good word put in with your family. If you are not born into an influential bloodline, the next best thing would be the child of a wealthy merchant. All notable Breton cities are sprawling trade hubs with vast marketplaces full of local and imported goods and luxuries. So the best way to rise into the upper middle class in High Rock is to barter and trade. If you happen to be lowborn, the hill you must climb to become powerful is far steeper. But there is a silver lining. You could be born in a pigsty with only the rags on your back, and there is still a chance that you could become a somebody. That is a fundamental part of Breton culture. The farm boy turned hero, the beggar turned successful entrepreneur. All of the fantasies are encouraged in High Rock, where the pursuit of power and renown is deeply ingrained and glorified. This culture is evident through a Breton's innate desire to embark on quests. The Pocket Guide to the Empire First Edition states that youths of all professions and trades in High Rock spend their free time in nightly pursuits, real and imagined, performing good deeds and the like for all and sundry in oft vain efforts to achieve one day a noble status. This quest obsession, more than anything, has served as High Rock's sense of national identity, a peculiar form of altruism and mutual reliance that binds its people together. Of course, this paints a rather romanticized idea of the peasantry in High Rock, and there is surely some truth to the notion, but as you might have picked up from that quote, heroic deeds aren't guaranteed to get you anywhere. The guide says that good deeds done in exchange for noble status are in oft vain, meaning you could put your life on the line, slaying beasts or routing bandit camps, only to be completely ignored by the upper class. The guide also says, Today the social structure of the Bretons has divided itself into a poor middle class and destitute peasantry, a magical elite separate from their squalor and an often incoherent jumble of nobility and ruling families above them all. This certainly paints life in a less colourful shade for those born outside of nobility, but at the same time this source was written in the 864th year of the Second Era, and High Rock has since become a much less chaotic land. Since the warp in the West, High Rock is certainly more unified, but feudal systems tend to run into the same problems wherever they're implemented. Petty squabbles among lords and monarchs receive all the attention while the common folk starve or work themselves to death in the fields, harvesting crops which are taken by their lords before they can so much as smell the produce. On the bright side, it is known that the Bretons love to hold festivals such as the New Life Festival, Scour Day, Flower Day and the Fire Festival. 
If you're willing to roll the socioeconomic class dice, then there's a little more to go over. What does being a Breton offer in the biological sense? Well, Breton genes are a combination of man and myrrh, and while for the most part Bretons seem to have more human traits, one thing they have inherited is the elven affinity for magic. Breton mages are some of the best in Tamriel. Aside from this, their physical features resemble their Nedic ancestors, their generally pale skinned tone and often hard to distinguish from Imperials and Nords. In some rare cases, Bretons do inherit the frail, sharp appearance of the elves, along with the arrogance, and some do even have slight points in their ears. Unfortunately, it seems the Bretons did not adopt the increased lifespan of the elves. You may think looking very similar to Imperials and Nords is a negative, but this comes with some major benefits. Unlike the races we've covered so far in this series, the Argonians and the Orcs, a Breton won't experience much racism and discrimination. Of course, in some regions this can't be avoided. A Breton would be called an outlander within a heartbeat of entering Morrowind, but that applies to every non dunmer some races, especially the Ultima High Elves, would consider Bretons to be the mongrel race of Tamriel, but looking mostly indistinguishable to the other human races makes this concern much less of a problem for Bretons wanting to travel beyond the borders of High Rock. So would you consider being a Breton worth it? Assuming you were born into the homeland of High Rock, would you enter the genetic raffle? Potentially entering the world as a prince, or perhaps a wealthy merchant, or the much more likely result, a destitute peasant. You could embark on heroic quests, you could realize your innate magical potential, you could be the most revered knight in the realm, earning yourself lands and titles, or you could end up face down in a ditch, killed by a lawless criminal or an orcish raiding party. I for one think being a Breton is actually quite worth it. Regardless of the class dice roll, you have a reasonably good start biologically to fulfill your potential, both magical and martial, but you also appear human, and you are mostly accepted without worries among the human communities of Tamriel. High Rock additionally is a place for trade, travel, and adventure, with much of its territory sharing the Iliac Bay with Hammerfell. So I would say that being a Breton is in fact worth it. It essentially boils down to being a magically gifted human who is born into a culture that glamorizes and romanticizes heroics and transcending the class and conditions you were born into. So what do you guys think? Is being a Breton worth it for you? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below and also let me know what race you would like to see discussed next. Thank you so much for watching this video. Head down into the description below for social media links of which you can follow as well as the previous installments of this Worth It series. My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet. Thanks so much again for watching and I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.